What is happening, YouTube? I'm Keaton here representing Formula Golf. I'm up here in Flagstaff, Arizona, visiting my girlfriend who goes to NAU. I am out here at the Timberline Short 9. Just got done practicing out at Continental Country Club. I came straight up here after the Monterey Open. Fortunately, I missed the cut, which helped me decide to make a pretty big swing change. I want my backswing to be more consistent throughout my bag always. I need a more stable position on top, which will get me a more solid and repeatable downswing, which will produce a better strike. And so this video is basically a sequence of when I started working on my swing when I got here until today. Today is my last day. I come back home tomorrow. I'm going to play a little nine hole golf course here, work on some wedges, work on some distance control. And I also have a special announcement to make after the conclusion of this video. So stick around for that. Anyways, guys, enjoy. I'm going to Try to make a hole in one. Day one. Let's go. So I, I have major problems with my golf swing, especially during the my most recent tournament where I was coming, taking it back too far to the outside, kind of uh, getting a little laid off and maybe rerouting at top. So I decided when I got up here, so I had all the time in the world to just kind of practice and grind away, was to change the swing to make it make my takeaway a little more inside and um, I'm a lot more stable position going up to the top. Uh, this is me trying to do that, and as you can see, it still is coming outside and almost a little re-rowdy. But, um, you know, first day, I, to me, it feels like I'm swinging almost like Jim Furyk right now, so it's going to look really awkward and hit some squirrely shots on a couple of them. I don't film every shot when I practice. I usually just do two or three at a time, and if I were to hit one perfect, on like my first filmed shot, I'd go back and take a look at it and see what I did right, and then go back again and then refilm. Yikes! <laughs> yeah, my miss especially is a, is a block out to the right, and working on this move uh, makes me block it. Had me blocking it out pretty consistently in the first uh, few buckets of balls that I hit. You can see, I mean, it's just really, it's really awkward. Whenever you try to make a swing change, especially on the backswing, it puts yourself into a position that you're not used to and your brain just doesn't know how to react from there. So, you know, from what I feel like is a very steep position, I tend to come a little bit too steep on the downswing, leave the club face open, and then wipe it out to the right. But, I mean, that one was good there. It's nice to be able to dissect these problems right, right off the bat when they happen. Even the good ones, like the last two there, were just slightly to the right. You'll see virtually the same thing with the driver as well. Again, it's not like they're horrible, it's they're just starting just right on my line and then fading off where I want it to start a little more straight with the fade. I was a lot more stable of a backswing than the first one, which kind of had a single little loose, a little extra movement on top. At the end of my first day, we're looking at, you know, a lot of my swings were very uh, awkward looking, which is fine, but the good ones are, were really good, so I, I had a really positive, you know, a lot of positive feedback, and I was hitting it well, too, so I, I knew what I was working on is what I want to be doing. I really feel like I can get through the ball. Now we fast forward a little bit. Day four. It is extremely windy outside. As you can see, my clothes are flying everywhere. And then Flagstaff, when the wind blows at this time of year, it gets pretty cold. So I'm starting with my gap wedge here, and 
my recommendation to you guys if you ever are forced to practice in a really windy situation is to go to the side of the range and then hit towards the wind. Never go downwind if you can avoid it. Versus right here, the wind is coming off the east and uh, basically straight into me from here. So it's a good way to, to practice your spin rate and your control. So like if I was hitting a shot with hook spin, it'll fly off in any you know to the left. And if I hit it with slice spin, it'll fly off to the right. So it's really nice to, especially since I was having a problem with hitting them right the, the few days before that and leading up to the day, that I was able to find a you know have wind like this, it was, it was almost like a blessing because this way I can really control my path coming down and the club face going through to hit straighter golf shots. I mean, these wedges uh, specifically, I was hitting really well. I was pretty excited about them. See, it's a little less rerouty than it was on the first day, which is good, but it's still not quite where I want it to be. Again, it, now I'm hitting into the wind, but more of the wind's going uh, right to left. And uh, that was pure right there. Since I hit a fade, it should just hold up on the wind. And if anything, just go a little bit left. You can see the ball flight here, how the wind kind of like pushes it onto the left and it starts falling. But uh, I'm aiming towards a little white stake out there. It's a pretty sweet driving range. It's uh, pretty well marked. Like they have a lot of targets to, to aim towards, and it's a huge, huge driving range. It was probably maybe 150, 175 yards wide. So you can do a lot of different shots, a lot of a lot of little aim spots. And yeah, I mean these few eight irons that I hit are really pure. Like I said, I film a couple at a time, and then I go back. I'll, I'll look and I'll dissect the swing on the camera for you know, five minutes or so, decipher what I need to do to to fix whatever little issue that I think, and in this case, it's more or less just, um, you know, trying to get my bat my takeaway a little more to the inside. Now moving on to the five iron, which is exceptionally hard to hit when you're dead in the wind. It's coming into me and right to left. Again, it's the same thing. If I can hit a, like a cut into the wind, it'll probably end up looking like a little draw. But uh, it's it was nice today. My start lines were virtually just the way I wanted, especially on the five iron today. And the last couple days of practice, it was, it was going to the right a little bit. So today was uh, I was really excited about being able to hit these type of ball shots into this wind pulled that one. I'm a little off balance and then blew me off. It's another thing when you're playing practicing in wind is that you're able to work on your balance too. It's just tough to stay afloat when the wind's blowing like this. But that one was that one's good right there. Moving on to the driver. The wind has slowed down a little bit. It's still out there probably blowing maybe 12, 13. Swing. You can see a little bit of extra movement on the top of the backswing there. I'm not too pleased about that. But I went back, took a look at it, and tried to work on it here. There you go, much more stable there. Still, look, still working on that takeaway. I mean, it literally, I feel like I'm swinging it to the inside. I got too much too far to the outside. My two alignment sticks there will help me keep it more to the inside. It's a good little... Uh, starting base to, to take away off of. After today uh, is when I started, because of the quality of golf shots that I was hitting and how pure I was hitting them, I, I started really getting a lot more confident in the moves that I was making. And when you're confident and you see proper results, it starts feeling a lot less awkward. So here's day seven. I've got an eight iron here. This, is, this one's going to be in slow motion. And uh, a major part about having a big, a nice stable backswing is that you get a more consistent downswing, a lot less movement. 
my lower body has a tendency of jumping and moving all over the place. And on this specific swing, I mean, that is right where I've always wanted to be. I mean, everything's right in front of me here. It's it's moving almost like gently through the ball. So from here, it's just turn and then let it go. And I, I can't tell you how happy I am with, a, with this specific position. And that's why I feel pretty confident that the swing changes that I'm making are correct. So a couple drivers here. Right now, the wind's actually blowing behind me and left to right, uh, which is a really awkward wind for someone who fades it. So that thing's going to take off to the right. So when it's like this, I just focus on my starting line, which is just right of this little white uh, post you can see over there to the left. And then if I could just fade it off of that, then that's fine. Oh, and those things are going a mile, by the way. <laughs> Because you're up here in altitude and you're downwind, I can I don't even know how far I was hitting these things, but they were they were out there. There's another good, nice, you know, not too many moving parts in that swing. It's just kind of turn back and turn through. On my final day of practice here, day ten, I pretty stoked on the changes that I made. It feels a lot more natural today. I'm still not done, not even close. But I mean, it just feels like I'm just taking it back and turning through and, and the positions that I'm getting and the quality of strikes that I'm getting is a uh, it's pretty exciting I'm really excited to get back home and work on it even harder in case you guys are wondering about the glasses those are prescription glasses I hate my contacts and actually stopped wearing them over the last couple months because I, I had some tournaments and I wasn't used to the contacts yet so I didn't want to be in a tournament and have my contacts you know mess around and adjust and hurt my eyes so here's my eight iron here I'm really happy with that swing but yeah with the glasses it's something I just got to get used to the it's so far so good and I think it, it, it's kind of been a, a helpful way for me to just kind of feel like I'm having a new beginning with a new swing here starting for this November If you're ever making a swing change or you know whether it's your downswing or your backswing really the goal is to try to make it feel very natural and the only way to do that is to hit every single practice shot that you have with a, a purpose you know like you have a distinct shot or a feel in mind and you're just trying to execute it and if you don't execute it like that one where I pull it make an adjustment here and then you know decipher why you pulled that one I don't normally miss the ball left so it's really easy for me to to figure out why I did it and uh, as a result, you know, the next one's just gonna, it's just gonna be a lot better. Like that one was, I can hit that one much better. So here's one where I, I hit this one well. And then I go to my next ball here, and like I said before, I, you know, if you're hitting one squarely and you're off to the right, you, can, or, you know, for instance, this one's going to be hit off to the right. You can almost see kind of like a lunging move at it. Like, yeah, it just was, was really awkward. But I knew why I hit that to the right. I didn't cover the ball, so I went back, took a look at it, and now I'm more, you know, I'm trying to rehearse the covering move. And whenever I, I do this, I, I try to overdo it on my first shot. So that one missed a little bit left, kind of like the first five iron that I hit. And now that I overdid it, I can basically um, split the difference between the one that I hit left and the one that I hit right. So I'll rehearse the, the covering move again. Just don't do it, you know, just don't overdo it like I did before and then commit to it. Ain't nothing wrong with that one. So here's this two iron. I actually hit this one really well. Oh no, that wasn't the one. 
I actually uh, sliced the crap out of that one. <laughs> but this one here, like I said, I film a couple at a time. This next one here, I hit really well, and so I, I, I want to go back and take a look at it to dissect what I did right. Especially after I hit one where I just didn't cover it and I wiped it out to the right before. So it still just went slightly right, but I pured it and it went really long. So I went back to the camera and took a look. And I find that when I'm hitting them to the right, is it, I could be wrong here, but I feel like it has a lot to do with my takeaway. When I'm taking it back a little bit too far outside, it just, it don't hit them bad. It just goes slightly off to the right. So this one I really focus on making sure this club face stayed square going back and to the inside. And see that one started off just a lot more straight and I hit that one really well. I was really excited after looking at this one on camera that, you know, the adjustments in the fields that I'm having are correlating well with the actual results. So here's another one where I hit one off to the right here. But it wasn't a bad swing. I just left the club face open. And this next one is uh, probably the best drive that I've hit through the whole course of this 10 days. And I, you know, I still have more to work on. Like I said, like there, I still need to bring more to the inside, still need to cover it. And I'd like to maybe get a little bit more of a, a turn going back, but here it's just such a stable golf swing. I mean, that thing was straight with a little fade. I was able to get into my, ba my balance finish position a lot easier. You know, so that's kind of where I want it to look like in going forward. I mean, this is just day 10. I, I expect to be working on it the exact same way and try to build on this swing and uh, the foundations that I'm building here all the way up for another month or so until my next tournament. And that's a goal of mine when I get back. Never stop doing this. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. The announcement that I want to make to you guys is that after eight years of being a professional golfer, I have finally secured a tournament sponsor. Words can't describe how excited I am. I have lived in my car, I have lived at friends' houses, slept on couches in order to chase this dream for the last eight years instead of settling down and getting a job and starting a real life. So now that golf is officially my job, I am able to quit parking cars, which is what I've been doing for the last couple of years. Uh, I am going to be moving out of my apartment complex and into my sponsor's RV. And uh, it's literally going to take so much pressure off of my daily life and all the tournaments that I play in. It's no longer am I going to be stressing out where every tournament feels like a major. I'm really excited that I get a chance to, you know, consistently play, set a schedule and go for it. It's going to start with next month. It's uh, the Sidekick Championship. Me and my good buddy Sam Johnson are going to join for a team uh, event for the Golden State Tour. And then I'm going to have a match play tournament and a couple others during the qualifiers. And now I have the new goal of going back to China. The PJ Tour China Series has just started up again. It's going to be starting up in March. And uh, I mean, I can't explain uh, my excitement for this. It's just. It's something that I've, I've, I've hoped for, and I felt that as long as if I, if I was able to get it, I would be able to succeed. So I'm going to give this thing my all, 100%. I still have major plans for Formula Golf, big plans that's gonna help players like myself and younger players compete. And also, I will be continuing my giveaways, though they'll be just a little bit less frequent because since I'll be practicing eight hours a day, I won't be able to test as much. Anyways, guys, I want to say thank you to everyone who's shown me so much support over the years through MTI and to Formula Golf. And always remember to keep on grinding.